Well, hi again. We're back. Yep, we are. Yeah. And we've been talking with our clients lately and uh, our graduate community about the idea of the pleasure trap. You know, we talked about the pleasure trap before, uh, how certain high calorie, salty, crunchy foods. Oily especially. Oily, yeah, that fatty stuff. So when I say high calorie, yeah, it's high sugar or high fat oil, yeah. So how those foods actually stimulate a dopamine response. And so we get hooked, we get addicted to these foods. And we've been talking about how that process isn't the complete problem. That is, because we get hooked on pleasure trap comfort foods, we notice that we don't just want to eat those foods all the time. It doesn't drive our eating behavior. There seem to be certain times or experiences in our lives when we're more drawn to those foods. Yeah, like when we get bored or we get angry or we get upset. Mm. We want to find relief. We want to find calm again yeah yeah and so it actually is very reasonable in a way it makes sense that if we're feeling discomfort that our mind would give us some ideas about how to settle down and we've had experience that boy if i have that brownie i feel better after having an episode of whatever my thinking was about my son didn't text me or well, my boss yelled at me, you know, we're kind of in this anxious state. We eat something and we feel that. Momentarily. That's the kick, isn't it? Yeah. It's, that, it's short term. Yeah. And, and so there's places for short term fixes. But we've been seeing, too, that we can do better than just deal with a short term fix. Now, one of the things that a lot of people in the um, food healthy food realm world that we listen to a lot of, I'm talking about is this acronym HALT. You know, when you're feeling like going for some food that you know isn't really that great for you and you're not really hungry, just pause, just HALT. And so the acronym HALT is hunger, if you feel, you know, and see if it's just that you're feeling hungry or angry, or lonely or tired. If these things are coming up and they're driving you for those high calorie dopamine hit comfort foods, just halt for a moment and see if that's really what you want. Yeah, for me, I find if I pause for a moment and ask, is this food ideal for me right now? I get a clear response. And as I've told you before, it's often have a glass of water. Yeah. It's so interesting, isn't it? And yet, initially, when that urge for potato chips or peanuts or whatever comes up, it seems so compelling. Like, this is the answer. But we pause and we check in, and really, the wisdom from our intelligence, inner intelligence, our body says water. Doesn't make sense to the brain, but it's the truth because it really works. It? Yeah, I have the best water and I completely forget about wanting X, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's a great strategy to deal with these urges when they come up. But what we've been sharing with our group and community as well, is that there's something more we can do about like the negative emotions, about the anger, the tiredness. The, the boredom. I mean, the boredom. Yeah, uh, the yeah, yeah. Well, scripture. not the tiredness so much. I was thinking the, the um, anger and the loneliness yeah. and boredom and anxiety and fear. And these negative emotions that come up that often, you know, the brain says, just get something to eat, it'll settle down, which is a great short-term result because really the mind always does settle down, doesn't it? Yeah. Our anxiety yeah. does not last a lifetime just because it started, it'll settle down on its own. 
But what we've been sharing is something that we've been coaching people around for a number of years now, that when we begin to see life differently, we begin to have a very different response to it. And what I mean by that is that I've told you before, when I was living in LA, driving the LA freeways, if I got cut off in traffic, 99, nine times out of 10, I would get angry. And it's interesting, I haven't thought about this before, but yeah, I'd get to work and I'd want something to eat. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. oh, Where's my, I can't wait for break so I can get a burrito. <laughs> that was my, one of my favorite things. And, uh, and so, you know, the, there's that natural response. But what I'm seeing now, and what we've been helping our clients see, is that that response of anger to getting cut off wasn't really being caused by that driver or that event that made me angry. What I'm seeing now is that the anger I was feeling was generated by the story I was telling myself about what just happened. Because usually on my way to work, you know, traffic's slow and that's when people are doing this weaving in and out, cutting people off and all that. And it's because we all feel we've got to get going faster. So you're saying, it seems to me, that if I'm feeling bored or anxious or any kind of emotion that makes me want to reach for food, that it may be the dialogue I'm having within. It may be simply my thinking about life in the moment rather than anything real. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You know, when my perception is that life works outside in, that the events in my life, you know, my son not texting me, my boss being upset with me, whatever, when it looks like the outside circumstance is producing the feeling of anger or loneliness or boredom or, you know, any number of things that we feel when we often want to reach for food. Yeah. When it looks to me like it's outside in, then it's hard to do anything else except reach for that food. Yeah. But now when I feel anger or boredom or any of these things come up, it's kind of like instead of let's change the feeling with food, it's kind of like uh, a little alert. It's kind of like a little alarm bell going off saying, you might want to look at what you're thinking right now. <laughs> because when I do that, I see that I'm still reacting to the old outside-in paradigm. And I see through it. And I see, oh, look what I'm thinking. I'm upset because I think what just happened should not have happened. And so doggone it, you know, that whole resistance to accepting what is in my life is what generates this negative feeling. And so, yeah, as I become more aware of the inside-out nature of life, the, the frequency with which I get angry or bored or lo feel lonely or separate you know, and left out and hurt by what somebody said, the frequency with which that occurs is really less. Yeah, for me, I just notice, oh, I, my mood's changed. I'm in my thinking mind again, and I don't give it any meaning. I just let it go on by. Yeah, which it naturally will. Which will, you know, so we eat the food and it goes on by. But what's interesting, I hear you saying, is that it goes on by even if we don't eat food. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So that's 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 the thing. So. It's, it's just produced so much more, what I want to say, stability in my life. I'm not so reactive. I'm not so fragile because when I'm dependent on what happens outside of me, what other people think of me, what occurs in my life, if I feel like that is what makes me feel the way I do, then I'm really fragile. I, it, it's like things break easily, kind of like a Christmas tree bulb, you know? I, yeah. it, it drops and it breaks so easily. It's a good metaphor. Mm. But when I see that life is inside out, then it's not like everything that happens in my life is great. But I'm more like a tennis ball. I bounce back really <laughs> quickly. That's good. Yeah. So there's so much more stability and um, 
freedom as I see life inside out rather than outside in. Yeah, and for me, I just enjoy life so much more mm -hmm. because those moments when I get lost in thought, I let them go on by. I don't give them anything. So I'm in a more, what, balanced state. Mm -hmm. And usually it's joyful. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what that brings up for me too is how when I believe life is outside in, I feel like I'm responsible for generating my happiness which means I've got to be monitoring everything that's going on around me to try and control everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that puts a real damper on my yeah. joy. Yeah. <laughs> my, my ability to just step into life and dance with life. It's like, oh no, I've got to control it. But when I see it's inside out, then I just have developed so much of a deeper trust in my ability to handle what comes up and, and dance with life instead of trying to control it. Mm. I like that, Bill. <laughs> I like it too. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve that. <laughs> we all do. Yeah, in a way, it's our birthright. That's yeah. a funny thing, isn't it? So the <laughs> recipe is really yummy. And we call it a breakfast potato medley. And it's quick and easy to make, and it's so delicious. And you can use it for any meal. And it has lots of baby spinach in it, mm. so we get our greens as well. So give it a try. I think you'll really like it. We were surprised how yum it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, it's going to be a regular around here, <laughs> I can tell. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and Thanks. hope to see you next week. Bye for now.